Hi, Buju and Neen students. This is Miss S here. Um, today we are going to be reading the book called The Totem Tale, A Tall Story from Alaska. Um, author Deb Vanassi and illustrator Eric Brooks. Um, we have already made our predictions about the book and now we are going to see if we can pick out all the story grammar elements um, when reading the book. So before I start to read, I'm going to review our story grammar elements. Okay, we have eight. I'm going to start presenting so that way you can see. Let's see here. All right. And here are our story grammar elements. There's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The title is here at the top, story grammar checklist. Our first story grammar element are the characters, all right? Who will be in our book? The second is the setting. We need to figure out where this is taking place. Is it at school? Is it at home? Is it at the park? And when? Is it during the day? Is it at night? Is it in the winter? Is it during fall? When is it? All right. And then every story has a problem. So we have to figure out what is their problem? And then how do the characters feel about that problem? Now, when you do have a problem, you have to kind of think of a plan, right, to fix that pro problem. So what are the characters plan to fix the problem? And then the solution. How did they solve that problem? And then at the end, we have anything that would wrap up. So anything else that you could tell me about the story that happened at the end. And then how do the, the characters feel at the end of the book? And how is that different um, from the middle of the book? I'm going to put this down. I'm going to stop presenting. And we will get started on reading. The Totem Tale, A Tall Story from Alaska. Author, Deb Vanassi, the person who writes the words, and illustrations by Eric Brooks, the person who draws the pictures. Ah, let's see, A Totem Tale. A Totem Tale. Deep in a cedar forest stood a totem pole, stark and still. Long ago, a carver stacked the totem animals and then forgot them. One night, the moon rose low and full, washed in the light of the moonbeams. The totem sprang to life. Frog leapt and twirled, kicking the stiffness from long legs, tucked up tight for countless years. Look at he gets to jump just like the other frogs. Beaver waddled to the stream, delighted in the loud slap of his tail against the water. Eagle swooped and dove with outstretched wings, silvery salmon darting beneath her looming shadow. Looks like she's going to catch a fish. Grizzly wriggled his back against a tall tree growling with the relief of long itch finally scratched. He's finally being able to scratch his itch after how many years? That has to feel good. Wolf lifted her voice toward the moon. Oh, howling with pure joy of silence broken. Raven strutted, strutted cocking his head and chattering to himself. All too soon, a hint of dawn brushed the blackened sky. The totems must return to the totem pole or the rising sun will trap them in the land of in-between and never there. But none of them could remember how they fit on the totem pole and each wanted the place of honor at the top. I'm the largest and the loudest, Grizzly roared. He shimmied up to the top, but the pole started swaying back and forth beneath his weight and the totems toppled to the ground. 
I am a fearless hunter, said Wolf with a quick scamper. She took her place at the top, but her sharp claws dug into the thin skin of the eagle's neck and down they went, one right after the, ne the next. All right, so we know that bear can't be at the top and wolf can't be at the top. I have the sharpest eyes, bragged Eagle, stretching her great wide wings to claim the highest spot. But her tail feathers tickled Wolf's nose and a loud ka sent them tumbling again. I've felled the tallest trees, said Beaver, lumbering up the pole. But he wasn't used to sitting up so high. After a teetering moment, he rolled off, taking the others with him. Who sings the sweetest at night? asked the frog. I don't see what singing has to do with it, grumbled the wolf, but she crouched to let the others climb up. With a skip and a hop, frog leapt to the very top, where she danced an exciting jig that made the pole quiver and shake until they all fell down. There's something you've forgotten, squat, the raven. Together, we told a story, a story of how frog muddied the water to hide the beaver from danger and how beaver dammed the stream so that eagle could fish from a quiet pool and how Eagle led Grizzly to a wide patch of wild berries, and how Grizzly shared his den with Woof one cold winter night. The totems looked at each other, nodding and remembering. They took their story places, Frog, then Beaver, then Eagle, then Grizzly, then woof, it was a perfect fit. Then Raven flapped and fluttered to the top as the first sunbeams shimmered over the horizon, casting the broad light of day on a story that will now be able to last forever. The end. All right, I'm gonna put that away and we're gonna see if I can review the story grammar elements that were in a totem tale. All right, I'm gonna put this down. I hope you enjoyed the book. Right now, while I'm pulling this up, why don't you see if you can think about your favorite part of the book? Okay, so here we have a totem tale, a tall story from Alaska. So that was our cover page. Now we need to figure out who were our characters. Well, we had six main characters. They were the animals on the totem pole, right? And we have a bear, a beaver, a frog, a wolf, an eagle, and a raven, our six main characters. Okay, and where did this take place? It took place in a cedar forest, all right? A cedar forest, so a lot of evergreen trees that look like this one right here. And it, did it pl take place during the day or at night? It took place at night, right? At night. <clears throat> and what was the problem in the story? Well, what, would ha what had happened is the animals had all split from the totem pole and they got to do all of their animal activities. So the bear got to scratch himself on a tree, right? The eagle was able to catch a fish in the, in the pond. Um, the frog was able to jump. The wolf was able to howl. All of these things that they weren't able to do during this night, they were able to leave the pole and they could do these animal activities. However, the problem was they needed to get back into the totem pole before sun rose, before the sun came up. Otherwise they would be lost forever. But the problem was they didn't know what order on the pole that they belonged. And how did they feel about this? They were confused, right? They didn't know their order, so they didn't know what to do. 
they were also worried because they did not want to be lost in the in the middle of or they didn't want to be um lost they did not want to exist so they wanted to make sure that they could get in the correct order on the totem pole before the sun rose so they um so they could be there forever let's see so what was their plan their plan was each animal right took a turn trying to be at the top to figure out hmm Maybe this is the correct order. Maybe this is the correct order. Trying to figure out what would work. A lot of the times they ended up crumbling and falling to the ground. So their plan was to just keep trying different orders for the animals. What was their solution? The solution was when Raven said, hey, you know what? We told a story. And our story um, is the order of which we sit on the totem pole. So once Raven remembered that they told a story, they were able to get in the correct order on the totem pole. And then because the animals were able to get into the correct order, they were able to stay there forever. So that means the story that the totem pole is telling will be able to last forever. So other people will be able to hear their story. And the animals were very happy about this, right? They were able to get back into the totem pole. They were able to figure out their order and they're happy that they can share their story with people for years to come. And that is it. All right, I'm gonna stop presenting. Oops. Let's try this. And now I'm going to give you your own assignment, all right? I'm gonna ask you questions about the story grammar elements of the book Totem Tale. I want you to see if you can answer them correctly. All right, thank you for listening today. Bye, Geekawabaman.